Today we're going to be talking about how to solve a boundary value problem. And in this particular problem, we've been given the equation y double prime, or the second derivative of y, is equal to y prime, or the first derivative of y. We've also been given two initial conditions, y of 0 equals 1, and y of 1 equals 2. Now you might be wondering, what is a boundary value problem, and how is it different from an initial value problem? Well, it's really the same, except that a boundary value problem isn't guaranteed to have a solution. When we have an initial value problem, given enough initial conditions and the right information, we'll always be able to find a solution. In a boundary value problem, that's not necessarily the case. What we're trying to do with the boundary value problem is solve for the constants c sub 1 and c sub 2. But given these initial conditions, that may not be possible. So what we're going to do today is try to solve this boundary value problem given this second order differential equation and two initial conditions. So let's see how it goes. The first thing we need to do with this equation is convert it into an equation in terms of r instead of one in terms of y. The silly trick that I like to use to do that is I count the prime marks on each y variable to determine what the new exponent is going to be on the r variable. So every time we have a y variable, we just change it to r, and the exponent on that r variable is going to depend on how many hash marks we have on that particular y variable. So for example, this is y double prime. It's going to change into r squared because there's two hash marks, so the new exponent is going to be a 2. So this y double prime becomes r squared. We're going to set that equal to y prime over here. So this y prime is going to become r to the 1, which of course is just r. Now we need to solve this for the roots of the equation. What we'll do is we'll subtract r from both sides and we'll get r squared minus r is equal to 0. And now we can try to factor the left hand side. We'll factor out an r and we'll get r times r minus 1 equals 0 when we pull the r out from this equation. Now we have two factors that we can set independently equal to zero. We have the first factor here, we'll set that equal to zero and we'll get r equals zero. Then we have our second factor here, r minus one, we'll set that equal to zero, we'll add one to both sides and we'll get r equals positive one. These are the two roots of our equation, of our second order differential equation. And what we notice right away is that they are distinct real roots. If you have practiced at all with second order differential equations, you know that you can get three types of roots when you go through this process. Distinct real roots, equal real roots, and complex conjugate roots. These are distinct real roots because they are real numbers, zero and one are real numbers, but they are distinct from one another. In other words, they're different. Zero is not equal to one, these are different numbers, they're distinct real roots. You can also get equal real roots, for example, if we had gotten here r equals 1 and r equals 1, those would both be real numbers, but they would be equal to each other, so we'd have equal real roots. You can also have complex conjugate roots, which will always involve the imaginary number i, and they're real easy to spot. These are clearly distinct real roots. When you have distinct real roots, you're going to be using this equation here for y of x, for the general solution to the second order differential equation. When you have equal real roots or complex conjugate roots, you use a different formula than the one shown here for the general solution. But since we have distinct real roots, this is the formula that we use. So what we do is we plug these roots in for r sub 1 and r sub 2, and it doesn't matter which root you plug in for which variable here, r sub 1 or r sub 2, it'll work out either way. I usually just plug the root I find first in for r sub 1 and the one I find second in for r sub 2. So the equation for our general solution will be y of x equals c sub 1 e to the 0 x plus c sub 2 e to the 1x. And of course, we can simplify that to say y of x is equal to e to the 0x is e to the 0. e to the 0 is 1. c sub 1 times 1 is just c sub 1. So we get c sub 1. And then e to the 1x is the same as e to the x. So we get plus c sub 2 e to the x. So this is the general solution for our second order differential equation. 
Now, because we've been given initial conditions, we want to try to use those to solve for C sub one and C sub two. What we'll do is we'll use our first initial condition, y of zero equals one, to try to solve for either of these constants. So we'll set the right hand side equal to the value we've been given here. So we'll say one is equal to, and then whatever we get when we plug zero into this right hand side. So we'll get C sub one plus C sub two e to the zero. We're plugging in zero here for x. When we do that, when we simplify this, e to the zero is just one. So we get one is equal to c sub one plus c sub two. Now we can try to solve this for either c sub one or c sub two. Clearly we're not going to get a real or, or finite value. We're going to need the other initial condition, hopefully to solve for both constants. But let's go ahead and solve this for c sub one so that we have something to plug in to the other equation for c sub one once we get it. So we'll solve this for c sub one by subtracting c sub two from both sides and we'll get c sub one is equal to one minus c sub two. Now let's use the second initial condition, y of one equals two. Again, we'll plug that into our general solution here and we'll get two is equal to c sub one plus c sub two e to the one. So when we get e to the one here, that just simplifies to e and we get two equals c sub one plus c sub two e. Now notice both of our equations still involve c sub one and c sub two. What we wanna do is take the value that we found here for c sub one, one minus c sub two, and plug that in here for c sub one to get this equation in terms of c sub two only. So we'll get two is equal to one minus c sub two plus c sub two e. If we subtract one from both sides, we'll get one is equal to negative c sub two plus c sub two e. And if we reorder our terms to avoid starting with the negative sign here, we'll get one is equal to c sub two e minus c sub two. And now we can go ahead and factor out a c sub two. So up here we'll get one is equal to c sub two times e minus one when we factor out that c sub two. Dividing both sides by e minus one gives us c sub two is equal to one divided by e minus one. Now we have a value for c sub two, which is great. So this is gonna be one of our constants here, c sub two. Now we just need to solve for c sub one. And of course we already have a formula for that. So we'll go ahead and plug in the value we just found for c sub two. We'll get c sub one is equal to one minus one over e minus one. And now we just need to simplify this. We'll go ahead and find the lowest common denominator, which is gonna be e minus one and we'll multiply this one here by e minus one over e minus one. So we'll get c sub one is equal to e minus one over e minus one minus one over e minus one. When we combine these fractions, we'll get c sub one is equal to e minus one minus one all over e minus one. And of course that gives us a value for c sub one of e minus two over e minus one. And there's our second value, the value of the constant c sub one. So now it's not just enough to find these two values, the goal is to find these two and then plug them back into the general solution for our differential equation, which we had here. So when we do that, we'll get our final answer, which is gonna be y of x is equal to Notice here we have c sub one. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that value, e minus two over e minus one, plus c sub two. So we're gonna say plus, here we have this value for c sub two, one over e minus one. And then we wanna multiply that by e to the x. So e to the x like that. Now the only thing you can consider doing is just simplifying this by moving this e to the x into the numerator of this fraction, getting e to the x up here in the numerator and having this one go away right here. But that's it. This is our final answer for the general solution of this second order differential equation given our two initial conditions.